Al Nur, the light. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. This is a highly dignified surah which we have revealed and the ordinances of which we have made obligatory and we have revealed it in clear commandments so that you may rise to great eminence. Strike the fornicatrice and adulteress and the fornicator and adulterer on the body of each of them a hundred times. This is the extreme limit and let no feelings of pity for the two hold you from obedience to Allah in executing his judgment. If you believe in Allah and the last day, and let a section of the believers be present there at the time of the execution of their punishment, the fornicator and adulterer cannot have sexual relations without lawful marriage except with a fornicatrice and adulteress or polytheistic woman of low morality, and the fornicatrice and adulteress, none can have sexual relations with her except a fornicator and adulterer, or a polytheistic man of low morality, and this adultery and fornication is forbidden to the believers. Strike eighty times on the bodies of those who calumniate chaste women and who do not support their accusation with four witnesses, and never accept their testimony, because it is they who are the disobedient and break the law. Except those who repent after this and make amends, they will find Allah the great protector, ever merciful. And those who charge their wives of adultery, and have no witnesses to support their charge, except their own selves, let each husband bear testimony, repeating it four times over, calling Allah to witness that he is surely of those who speak the truth in the matter of charging his wife of adultery. And the fifth time he should say on oath that Allah's wrath be upon him if he be of the liars. But it shall avert the punishment from her if she calling Allah to witness testifies four times over that he is of the liars in bringing this charge against her. And the fifth time she should say on oath that the wrath of Allah be upon her if he, the husband, has spoken the truth about her. But for Allah's grace and his mercy which rest upon you and but for the fact that Allah is oft returning with compassion, all wise, you would have come to grief. Verily, those hypocrites who brought the false accusation against Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, are a section of your own people. Do not think this incident to be bad for you. Rather, it is good for you. As for the accusers, every one of them shall receive his due punishment according to that which he has accomplished in the form of sin. As for him who among them took the principal part thereof, there awaits him a grievous punishment. When you heard of this accusation, why did not the believing men and believing women have a better opinion in respect of their own people and say, this charge is an obvious lie? Why did they, the fabricators of this charge, not bring four witnesses in support of this accusation of theirs? Since they failed to produce the required witnesses, it is they who are the very liars in the sight of Allah. But for the fact that Allah has shown his grace and mercy to you in the present world, and in the next a great punishment would have certainly befallen you on account of that slander which you spread. When some of you began to learn this slander from each other's tongues, you gave tongue to that rumor and made statements of which you had no knowledge and you considered it a trivial thing, while it was grave in the sight of Allah. And why did you not say, as soon as you heard of it, it does not behove us to talk like this? Holy are you, O gracious God! This is a monstrous calumny. If you are true believers, you should bear in mind that Allah admonishes you never to repeat such a thing again. And Allah explains to you his commandments, and Allah is 
all-knowing, all-wise. Those who love to spread immorality among the believers will have a woeful punishment in this world and the next, and Allah knows while you do not know the consequences of this evil. But for the grace of Allah and His mercy that rests upon you, and but for the fact that Allah is most compassionate, ever merciful, none of you would have ever been so chaste and pure. O you who believe, do not follow the footsteps of Satan. He that follows the footsteps of Satan should remember that he, Satan, surely enjoins immorality and indecency. But for the grace of Allah and his mercy that rest upon you, not one of you would have ever been pure. But Allah purifies him who wishes to be purified. And Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. And let not those of you who are possessed of grace, with moral virtue, and of plenty of riches like Abu Bakr, swear that they will give nothing to the kindred, the needy, and those who have left their homes for the cause of Allah. But let them forgive and forbear the offense. Do you not desire that Allah should protect you against your faults? And Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Those who calumniate, chaste, unwary, innocent believing women stand cursed in the present life and the hereafter, and there awaits them a grievous punishment. On the day of requital, when their tongues and their hands and their feet shall bear witness against them for the evil deeds they used to do. On that day, Allah will pay them in full for their just dues, and they shall know that Allah alone is the absolute truth, and as well makes the truth manifest. The evil and impure deeds are a characteristic of impure people, and the bad and impure people are inclined towards the bad and impure deeds. Similarly, good and pure deeds are a characteristic of good and pure people. And the good and pure people are inclined towards good and pure deeds. It is they, the good and pure, who are innocent of all that they, the accusers, may allege about them. There awaits them protection and an honorable and generous provision. O you who believe! Do not enter houses other than your own unless you have obtained willing permission and mind. You should greet the inmates of these houses. That is better for you. You have been given this commandment that you may be heedful. But if you find nobody in them, do not enter therein unless you have got from the owners or the rightful caretaker previous permission. And go back if you are told to go back. That would be pure and best for you. Indeed, Allah is well aware of all that you do. It is no sin on your part to enter freely non-residential houses wherein your goods are lying, and Allah knows all that you profess and all that you conceal. Tell the believers to restrain their looks in the presence of women not closely related to them and so lawful for marriage and guard their chastity. That is purer and best for them. Surely Allah is well aware of what they do. And tell the believing women to restrain their looks also in the presence of men who are not near of kin and so lawful for marriage, and guard their chastity, and not to disclose their natural and make-up beauty except such as cannot be helped and is apparent and draw their head coverings over their bosoms, and they should not display their beauty save to their husbands, or to their fathers, or to their fathers-in-law, or to their own sons, or to the sons of their husbands, or to their own brothers, or to the sons of their brothers, or to the sons of their sisters, or their women who are their decent companions, or to their bondsmen, or to such of their male attendants as have no sexual appetite or to such young children as have yet no knowledge of the hidden parts of women. 
and let them not strike the ground with their feet, so that which they must hide of their beauty or adornment may become known. And, O believers, turn to Allah, one and all, that you may attain true happiness and your ultimate goal. Arrange marriages for those who are single, and for the males and females who serve you, and are deserving and fit to lead a married life. If they are poor, Allah will grant them means out of his bounty. Bountiful is Allah, all-knowing. And those who find no means of marriage should exercise restraint and keep themselves chaste until Allah grants them means to marry out of his grace and bounty. There is another commandment, as for those of your bondsmen or women, as ask for a written contract of freedom for themselves on payment of ransom. Write this deed of manumission for them, provided you find good capabilities in them, and give them out of Allah's wealth, which he has given you. Another commandment for you is that, with a mind to gain by this unrighteous means, the benefits of the present life do not constrain your slave girls to unchaste life by keeping them unmarried, when they desire to marry to preserve their virtue. But if anybody forces them to abstain from marrying and to become unchaste, they will find, after they are forced, that God is most forgiving, ever merciful. And we have sent down to you revelations which explain to you the truth, and have also revealed some accounts of those who have passed away before you. And we have sent in addition an exhortation for those who guard against evil. Allah is the extensive light of the heavens and the earth. His light can be compared to a lustrous pillar on which is a lamp. The lamp is inside a crystal globe. The globe of glass is as if it were a glittering star. It is lit by the oil of a blessed olive tree, which belongs neither to the east nor to the west, rather wells the whole world in its fold. Its oil is likely to glow forth of itself, even if no fire touch it. This lamp is a combination of many lights over and over. Allah guides towards his light whoever desires to be enlightened. And Allah sets forth excellent parables for the people, and Allah alone has full knowledge of everything. This light is now lit in houses of the companions which Allah has ordained to be exalted and his name to be commemorated in them. Therein are such as glorify him in the mornings and the evenings. Men whom neither trade nor sale distracts from exalting the name of Allah and from the observance of prayer and from presenting zakat regularly. They dread the day when the hearts and the eyes will be in a state of agitation and anguish, with the result that Allah will give them the reward according to their fairest deeds, and will even give them much more by His grace and bounty. And Allah does provide without measure to whom He will. And as to those who disbelieve, their deeds are like a mirage in a desert. The thirsty man assumes it to be water, until he comes up to it and finds it is nothing at all. And instead of water by his side, he finds that Allah has always been present with him, and he then pays him his account in full, and Allah is swift at reckoning. For the deeds of the disbelievers are like thick utter darkness of the fathomless deep sea, waves on top of which there are higher waves, covering its surface which is overcast by clouds. These are layers of darkness piled one upon the other, so that a person, however much he may try, can hardly see his hand when he holds it out. Indeed, there is no light at all for the person whom Allah gives no light. Have you not pondered that it is Allah whose praises celebrate those who are in the heavens and on the earth? and so do the birds on the wings. Each one of them knows his own way of prayer and glorification, and Allah knows well what they do. 
and to Allah belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah shall all human beings eventually return. Have you not seen that Allah drives the clouds steadily? Then he draws them together, and then he makes them piled up, so that you can see the rain pouring forth from their midst? And he sends down clouds looking like mountains, wherein is hail, and he smites with them whom he pleases, and averts them from whom he pleases. The brilliant flash of its lightning almost snatches away the sight, rendering the eyes sometimes blind. Allah sets the cycle of the night and the day. Surely in this law of retardation and acceleration, working in this phenomenon of nature, is indeed a lesson about the spiritual evolution of a human being for those possessed of understanding. And Allah has created every animal from water. Some of them move upon their bellies, and some move upon two feet, and some among them move upon four. Allah creates what he pleases. Verily, Allah is possessor of every power to do what he will. We have certainly sent down revelations which explain the truth, and Allah guides him who desires to be guided to the exact right path. And some of the people say, We believe in Allah and the Messenger, and obey them. But even after professing this, a section of them, the hypocrites, turn away. Such are no believers at all. When they are summoned before Allah and his messenger, that he may judge between them, lo, a party of them turn away. But if they consider that the right is on their side, they come to him running, showing submission. Is it that their minds are diseased? Or do they suffer from doubts? Or do they fear that Allah and his messenger will deal with them unjustly? Nay, wrong are their misgivings. It is they themselves who are the unjust. The only response of the believers when they are summoned before Allah and his messenger so that he may judge between them is that they say, We hear and we obey. It is they who will attain their goal. And those who obey Allah and his messenger, and hold Allah in awe, and take him as a shield for protection, it is they who shall be triumphant. They, the hypocrites, swear to Allah by their most earnest oaths, that if you only command them for defensive fight, they will certainly march forth from their homes. Say, do not swear. Only reasonable obedience in what is right and lawful is all that is required from you. Surely Allah is aware of what you do. Say, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn your back, remember that He, the Messenger, is responsible for what He is charged with, and you are responsible for what you are charged with. Indeed, if you obey Him, you will be following the right path. The messenger is not responsible but for the delivery of the message to all in clear terms. Allah has promised those of you who believe and do deeds of righteousness that surely he will make them successors on the earth as he made successors from among their predecessors and that he will surely establish for them their faith which he has approved for them and that he will surely replace their state of fear with a state of security and peace. They will worship me alone, and they will not associate anything with me, and those who show ingratitude for all the favors done to them after that, it is they who will be reckoned as the worst disobedient. And believers, observe the prayer, keep on presenting the zakat, and obey the messenger that you may be shown mercy. Think not that those who disbelieve can ever be able to frustrate our plan on the earth and escape us. Their abode is fire. What an evil resort! O oh, you who believe, it is binding on those whom your right hands possess, 
and those of your children who have not reached the age of puberty to ask your permission before coming into your private rooms in three instances before the morning prayer and when you lay aside your clothes due to the heat in summer at noon and after the night prayer these are three times when your privacy should be respected at other times no blame shall lie on you or them if they come to you without permission for they have to move about waiting upon you some of you attending upon others according to need that is how allah explains to you his commandments for allah is all-knowing all-wise when the children among you reach the age of puberty they too should seek permission to come to your rooms just as those elderly people mentioned before them do that is how allah explains to you his commandments and allah is all-knowing all-wise and as to the elderly spinsters who are past childbearing age and who do not hope for sexual intercourse it is no offense for them to lay aside their outer garments provided they do not do it to display their beauty but if they abstain even from that it is much better for them indeed allah is all hearing all knowing there is no bar on and not improper for the blind nor is there any bar on nor improper for the lame nor is any bar on nor improper for the sick nor on your people that you eat from your own houses or the houses of your fathers and children or the houses of your mothers or the houses of your brothers or the houses of your sisters or the houses of your paternal uncles or the houses of your paternal aunts or the houses of your maternal uncles or the houses of your maternal aunts or from that of which the keys are in your possessions or from the house of a friend of yours no blame lies on you whether you eat together or separately and when you enter houses greet your people present therein with the salutation prescribed by allah a salutation full of blessings and purity that is how allah explains to you his commandments that you may abstain from evils true believers are only those who believe in allah and his messenger and who when they are with him upon any matter of common importance which has brought them together do not leave the messenger until they have asked permission of him surely it is those who ask your permission who truly believe in allah and his messenger so when they ask your permission for some urgent and important affair of their own give your permission to whom you will of them and ask allah's protection for them verily allah is great protector ever merciful believers do not treat the call of the messenger among yourselves like the call of one of you to another allah indeed knows those of you who sneak away stealthily from the conference so let those who go against his command beware lest some calamity should befall them or they receive some painful punishment beware whatever is in the heavens and on the earth belongs to allah he ever knows in what state you are and he knows what you are holding on to the day when all people shall be made to return to him he will tell them all they had been doing for allah is the possessor of full knowledge of everything